Welcome to the latest macOS Sequoia update 15.3.1 on unsupported Macs and I got bad news for Mac Pro users. Welcome to Jesse's Flying and as you can see I am still in full swing installing the latest macOS 15.3.1 Sequoia version on all my unsupported Macs. Starting in 2011 as this iMac here through all different kinds of MacBooks and uh, Mac Pros up until 2017. That is the iMac behind me. And I got bad news for the Mac Pro cheese grater users, but about that later in the video. But first, let's talk about the good news. The good news is that on all my Macs and here on the iMac 2011, it just says about seven minutes remaining. So all the updates went smooth without any problems and basically all the unsupported Macs obviously still have the same minor issues, glitches and so on as you can find here in my video about macOS 15.3 as 15.3.1 is just more or less a security update. Broad overview over the glitches and problems. For instance, this is a MacBook Pro 2000. 15 and that is the only one in all my lineup that has some graphic glitches with the widgets if you put the widgets on the desktop and it doesn't matter if you switch them to the color mode or the monochrome mode or automatic where it switches if they are in the background or in the foreground as you can see here there is no percentage of my battery and no actual number of the today's date. If you switch it into the other mode, you can see that some other details are missing. And so that is a graphical glitch that is, okay, a minor thing. I talked about that in my other video as well. Obviously nothing changed because the good news for 15.3.1, you don't need a new open core legacy patcher version. And by the way, there is no new open core legacy patcher version. The latest is still 2.2.0. But, another but, there is a new metal lib library version. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is that? Okay, for some very old Macs, and I have to check that with my notes, these are the Intel Ivy Bridge and Haswell CPU generations. In my case, it's the MacBook Pro 2012 and the MacBook Air 2013. In this case, you need the Matlib library. The Open Core Legacy Patcher will try to download that, but as you update, nearly all of the Macs don't have any Wi-Fi after the update until you install the root patch again, which gives all the drivers back, for instance, for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So, if you have a Mac 2012 or 13, it is recommended that you download the latest Metalib library and install it up front. And that is the version, obviously, 15.3.1 as the macOS Sequoia version. All the links are down in the video description. But otherwise, nearly all other Macs here need a KDK, a kernel debug kit. And that is basically if you have a dedicated graphics card, for instance, an AMD Radeon graphics chip or whatever. Good news, there is no new KDK for 15.3.1. So if you have 15.3 installed, no new download is required. And the OpenCore Legacy Patcher will just use the KDK 15.3 for its root patching after the update. There's another glitch that you can find here on the MacBook Pro 2015, but you can also find it on the MacBook Air 2013. So it's not only this one generation maybe of Macs, and that is a little glitch with the Wi-Fi symbol. Maybe you have seen that already. You're booting up your Mac and the Wi-Fi symbol is grayed out. But that doesn't mean it's not connected to a Wi-Fi because if you just click on this symbol, then the menu pops up, you see the Wi-Fi is connected and you have the blue icon. And as soon as you click on it and the menu pops up, 
the symbol gets white and shows it's connected. So that is only just a graphic glitch. But there is the but and that is the Mac Pro 2012 cheese grater. And I tested it on all my other Macs. No other Mac has that issue. First of all, if you update the Mac Pro and after the update, you need a USB hub and a wired mouse and keyboard. Like for instance, this Apple keyboard, but any other USB keyboard will do because when you update it, it doesn't have any Bluetooth. And as the USB 2.0 drivers are also gone, you need a USB hub between your keyboard and mouse and the Mac Pro. Um, I talked about that uh, in many of my um, tutorials, so no new news here. But this USB issue might be the root cause for another problem that I found out because one of my um, viewers gave me a comment below the video. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, I would strongly recommend you do so. So subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notification. And if you find anything, give me a comment below um, or join my Discord server. Our Discord community, there is uh, a lot of people discussing there and helping each other. The link is also down in the video description. And the problem with the USB or what the USB might be a root cause for is that USB cameras don't work. And as the Mac Pro itself doesn't have a camera, depending on the monitor you plug in, I just have a simple Logitech USB webcam and I can plug it into any other Mac. I didn't test it with the iMac 2011 yet because it's still got less than a minute remaining, but it's still updating. So as you can see, this is a brand new video, but I plugged it in into the MacBook Pro 2012, MacBook Air 2013, MacBook Pro 2015, MacBook Pro 2016, iMac 2017, Mac Pro Trash Can 2013, that's sitting here behind the iMac, all other Macs do work with that camera. If you start photo booth, for instance, most of the MacBooks have an integrated camera at the screen. And, but if you plug this into the USB port, you can switch between the cameras. That doesn't work with the Mac Pro. And it doesn't matter if I plug it into the front USB ports, into the rear USB ports, which are all USB 2.0, and I do have a USB 3.0 card in a PCI Express slot. If I plug it in there, you can just see the blue light showing for about a second and then it's going off again, which would indicate that the camera is on. It just starts and goes off, shows no picture, but the Mac Pro shows that it is connected recognizes the camera but no picture and as you can see the iMac 2011 is just finished with updating and the open core legacy patcher pops up and says okay you're running without root patches so let me start the root patches here so the iMac can get ready and let me show you the issue with the Mac Pro and a possible solution for that so here's my Mac Pro below my desk, and that is a Logitech USB webcam. I opened up the photo booth, and you now see there's no connected camera, obviously. And see what happens when I just plug this into the USB port. It gets blue, and it shuts off. And then you can see the note that there's no connected camera is gone and if I go up here to camera you can see that there is a HD Pro webcam C920 that's the webcam I have here but photo booth doesn't show anything no picture and that doesn't matter if I have it here in the front USB port or if I plug it into the back ports let me do that let 
you can see it gets blue and it shuts off. No picture, whatever. And then I tried my USB 3.0 card that's in a PCI Express slot. So let me plug it in there. You can see it gets blue, shuts off, no picture at all. So as I already said, this camera worked on all other Macs instantaneously, no problems. The only one I didn't test yet is the iMac 2011 and therefore I plugged it in there and let's see if Photo Booth recognizes this camera on the very old iMac. So if I start Photo Booth, as you can see there's a green light at the top, I don't know if you can see it here on the video, but right now it's showing the video from the integrated camera that's here at the top of the screen. But if I go to camera, as you can see, it shows the HD Pro Webcam 920. And when I switch, this one works as well. You can see there's a blue light here and it's working instantaneously. I can switch back and forth between the cameras and both cameras work. But I promised there might be a solution for the Mac Pro users. Here on my desk is the LED cinema display, the DisplayPort version. There's another one that is a Thunderbolt version with Thunderbolt 2. This one is the DisplayPort version. I don't know if it works with the Thunderbolt version, at least with the DisplayPort version because this one has a regular power plug and then there is a cable that has mini display port that has a power MagSafe connector for maybe a MacBook and it has a USB 2.0 con connector. That USB connector, if you plug it into the Mac Pro as well, as well as the mini display port, you power the USB hub. There's a three USB-A hub in the display on the back of the display same as with the iMac and you connect the iSight camera that's up here in the display because basically these displays are like iMacs just without the computer part. You do have USB hub, you do have an iSight camera and if I, I just plugged it into the Mac Pro 2012 here and if I open up photo booth right now you can see the iSight camera works. If I go to camera, you can see display iSight up here and you can see this, the recording here on my screen. So at least the Apple USB webcam works the iSight camera because it's connected to the regular USB. And I connected it to the regular USB 2.0 in the rear. It's not via USB 3 port or anything. So while the Logitech camera works on all other Macs, just not on the cheese grater, it does work on the Mac Pro 2013 trash can. If you have a Mac Pro and maybe you have a cinema display or any other Apple display, that camera might work. And so give me a comment below or just hit your findings into the Discord server if you have a Mac Pro and if you have maybe a Mac Pro 4.1 or 5.1 or maybe even 3.1, does your camera work? And what camera do you have? Maybe it's just Logitech. I don't know. I don't have any other camera for testing right now. Or does your display work? Or do you use an iMac in target display mode just as a display for the Mac Pro? And this camera works just Give me a comment below the video um, and share your findings and help each other if you're in need of a webcam with a Mac Pro cheese grade. By the way, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any updates, any news. There will be soon the next part of my video log about gaming and that will be more or less a tutorial how to use crossover that is a translation layer to have Windows games work on macOS 
with Apple Silicon. So I do play on my MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro chip. The next video will be there soon about all different kinds of games, of launches, Battle.net, Steam. Um, we have GOG games, we have um, all kinds of different games, older, newer. I give you the best setups for the bottles, as it's called, where you install the games into. And I give you a step-by-step -step tutorial how to install Crossover, how to use that for the most common games, for the most common launchers. Um, World of Warcraft, Diablo 4, Steam, uh, with Path of Exile, with Minecraft and Cyberpunk 2077 and so on and so on. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.